orbital energy diagrams, and orbital filling rules. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves of energy state diagrams. So we saw these back when we talked about the Bohr model of the atom. And the energy state diagram, remember, shows these rankings of the energy levels from lowest to highest, and they're labeled with principal quantum number N, which indicates the energy level. And remember, in the Bohr model, there was just one energy state for each N. Okay? Now we're going to extend this just a little bit. All right? So the energy state diagram for the hydrogen atom looks like this. And so this incorporates these orbitals that we've been talking about. Okay? And so here, again, they're ordered from lowest to highest energy. There are more up here. I only went up to n equals 3. You can see the 1s orbital, that's the lowest, and that's in the n equals 1 shell. So that corresponds to n equals 1 in the Bohr model. Okay, n equals 2, that corresponds to n equals 2 in the Bohr model, except now for the hydrogen atom, we now have 2s orbitals and 2p orbitals. Okay, so remember our quantum number said that for n equals 2, we can have both s and p orbitals. For n equals 3, now we can have d orbitals as well. But notice that they're all at the same energy. So we call this degenerate. That's same energy, equal energy. These are degenerate orbitals. And these are degenerate orbitals. Okay? And so this is the energy state diagram for the hydrogen atom. Okay, so now we are going to start adding electrons to our energy state diagrams. So we're going to start slotting them in, in the orbitals that they are in. We are going to add them either spin up or spin down. Okay, so we're going to use arrows to indicate electrons in orbitals. All right, so spin up, pointing up, spin down, pointing down. Okay, now the hydrogen atom has only one electron. Okay. And so when we put that one electron in the 1s orbital, then we call that the ground state. So that's the lowest energy. And remember, we saw the ground state in the Bohr model also, and that was also n equals 1. That's the lowest energy. Okay? So when the electron is in the 1s orbital for the hydrogen atom, that's the ground state. Now, if we add a little bit of energy to this hydrogen atom, then we can promote this electron from the 1s to some higher energy orbital, okay? I could have put it in the 2s. I could have put it in this 2p or this 2p. It doesn't matter. But I just chose this one, and so this electron was promoted up into one of the 2p orbitals. And then we just call that an excited state. Okay, now... For atoms that have more than one electron, which of course is everything except for hydrogen, then we now have a different picture for our energy state diagram. So now our s, p, and d orbitals and f orbitals, those are no longer going to be at the same energy for a given n. So they won't be degenerate anymore. Okay? So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so we can see what happens. So basically, when we have more than one electron in an atom, then those electron-electron repulsions affect the energies of these orbitals. Okay, and so now, here's n equals 1, and of course there's only one orbital there, but look, look what happened to 2. All right, so 2s is now lower in energy than 2p. So... Now, the energies of these orbitals depends not only on n, which is 2, it also depends on l. So remember that for an s orbital, l equals 0. For a p orbital, l equals 1. So for the n equals 2 principal shell, now we have two different energies for the two l values. So two different energies for the two subshells. And the same thing goes for n equals 3. So we can see we have 3s, 3p, and 3d, and none of these are at the same energy. 3d is the highest, 3p intermediate. Okay? And then 
just another little interesting thing to point out here. Notice that 4s is very similar in energy to 3d, and I essentially have them basically equal, okay? And we'll talk about why in a little while. Okay, so this is just what I said, where 3d and 4s are very similar. And when we do examples of filling electrons or writing electron configurations, then we're going to see that we fill 4s before 3d, and then when we make a cation or when we remove electrons uh, to form some ion, then we're going to lose those 4s before we lose the 3d. Okay, so just keep that in mind that that's coming. It won't be in this presentation, but it's coming. Okay, so orbital filling rules. Okay, so there are a few rules as we slot these electrons into orbitals. Okay, and the general principle is that we start from the lowest energy and we keep successively adding electrons till we run out from lowest to highest energy. Okay, and that's called the ground state configuration rule. So we're always going to put electrons in in the lowest energy way possible, okay? And there are two parts to that. One of them has to do with n, so lower n, you know, or, you know, s orbitals are lower energy than p orbitals, so that's part of it. And another part of it is called Hund's rule, and we'll get to that in just a second. Okay, another important rule here is the Pauli exclusion principle. Okay, now earlier in a different presentation I said that every electron has to have its own address. So it has to have its own unique set of four quantum numbers. And no two electrons can have the same set of four quantum numbers. That's the Pauli exclusion principle and that absolutely cannot be broken, ever. Okay, so if you break the Pauli exclusion principle, then you have an invalid electron configuration. That means it's wrong. It's not correct. It can exist. Okay, so let's see what that looks like on the next slide. Okay, so let's say I have two electrons in the 2s orbital. Okay, which of these two arrangements violates the Pauli exclusion principle and is not allowed? Okay, so it's the bottom one. All right, now why is that? Okay. So to really understand this, we need to think about our quantum numbers, okay? So remember, 2, that's the principal quantum number 2, okay? S is L, and L equals 0, okay? And so both of these electrons have 2 and 0 for their first two quantum numbers, see that, okay? They're both in the same orbital, all right? And there's only one type of orbital in the... S subshell, okay, so there's only one of them, shall we say, there's only one in a set, so though that quantum number is the same, all right, but because one is spin up, M sub S is plus one half, and the other one is spin down, M sub S is minus one half, they do not have the same exact set of four quantum numbers, okay? So now look at the bottom arrangement, and look at this. So again, n is 2 for both of them, l is 0 for both of them, m sub l is 0 for both of them, okay? And they also are both spin up, so they both are plus 1 half. So that's not allowed. So if you do that, if you put two spin up electrons or two spin down electrons in the same orbital, it's wrong. It cannot exist that way, okay? That breaks the Pauli exclusion principle and it is not allowed. Okay, now Hund's rule is slightly different in that it's more of a guideline, you know, like on Pirates of the Caribbean, okay? So basically when you have electrons that are placed in orbitals of equal energy or degenerate orbitals, remember that means equal energy, then they prefer to remain unpaired if possible and have the same spin, okay? So if you follow Hund's rule, that's lower energy than not following Hund's rule. But if you do break Hund's rule, it's an excited state, but it's, it is allowed, okay? So you are allowed to do that 
it's just an excited state as opposed to if you follow Hunt's rule and you follow the lowest energy configuration going from the bottom from the lowest energy orbitals if you follow both of those that would be the ground state so let's look at an example of Hun's rule okay so which of these arrangements follows Hun's rule okay so let's talk about these guys all right so look at this one first so we have three electrons we have three degenerate orbitals these guys are paired and that guy is hanging out by himself in one of them spin down okay now Hun's rule says that they prefer to remain unpaired if possible, okay? And look, there's an empty orbital, so it actually is possible for this guy to move over here, all right? So that's, the, that's one part of Hun's rule. The other part is that, as in this arrangement, they're unpaired, but look, they don't have the same spin. This guy is being different. He has spin down, where the other two are spin up. And so this is still an excited state. It is allowed, but this is higher energy than if they all had the same spin and were unpaired in those orbitals, okay? So here's an excited state paired when there's an empty orbital. Here's an excited state where they don't all have the same spin. This is the ground state. This is the lowest energy configuration for that 3P set. Okay, so now when you follow all of the orbital filling rules, you can apply the alphabet principle, okay? And basically that says that the electron configurations can be built up by adding successive electrons to orbitals following the order on the periodic table, starting with hydrogen, okay? And this takes a few examples to see, but once you get it, it's actually really quite easy. Okay, so let's look at this periodic table here, and I've labeled these various blocks on the periodic table, okay? And as we're going to see in our example, when we're in the S block, we're going to be filling S orbitals, okay? So N equals 1, if we remember from early in the course, this first row, or the first period, is N equals 1. Second one is n equals 2, okay? And that's principal quantum number n, okay? So that's n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, all right? So, for instance, if we are going to fill electrons into helium, we'd put, we'd start with 1s, so there's n equals 1, 1s in the s block, 1 electron, 2 electrons. So, as we will see, that would be 1s with 2 electrons in it. Okay, when we go down to lithium, we have three electrons to slot in there, okay? So 1s1, 1s2, that one's full, so write it down. And then we would write 2, because we're in the n equals 2 row, 2s1, one electron, okay? And that accounts for all three electrons. Two are in the 1s, one in the 2s, okay? And then... Just continuing, same type of idea, beryllium, still in n equals 2, still in s, so it'd be 1s2, 2s2, okay? And then just one last one before we go, n equals 2, let's look at boron, we have five electrons total, two of them go into 1s2, like we already said, two of them go into 2s2, so two of them, so that's 2s2 for n equals 2, and now we're going to start filling p orbitals. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, okay? And so for carbon, it would be 2p2. For nitrogen, 2p3. For oxygen, 2p4. Fluorine, 2p5. And neon, 2p6. Okay, so we're going to see how to do that in more detail, but that gives you a preview on what we are going to do with this. All right, so watch the next video, the orbital filling rules and electron configurations next, and then we're going to look at example problems posted separately.